I'm going to see Virgil. How is this connection for you? I don't even have words, you know? There's certain shows that like stand out for various reasons and I feel like, you know, that show for Vuitton Men's was, a, was one of those like special category shows. The clothes were amazing, beautiful, finished, elegant. Mm -hmm. Women want to wear those men's clothes. But for me, the feeling, 32 years of modeling, I never felt that feeling of unified love from every single person yeah. there for you. Wow. How did you get this job? <laughs> <laughs> I dreamt about it. I, I willed it, willed it into fruition, thinking that it can happen and doing everything in my power to sort of make it cross and my make path. it manifest. I can name instances eight years ago that were part of this process. So I can name instances eight months ago that were part of it. And I think it's a metaphor for anything that one wants to do in life. When was the first time you came to Paris, um, you and your crew? Eight years ago now, maybe. Kanye and myself have been friends for 14 years now. We've always been driven by fashion. We've always been the kids in the store, like, wanting to know more, because there's some, there felt like something that was at play, something that we didn't know, but we appreciated. Mm. So, that was ironically at the Louis Vuitton store on Michigan Avenue. Kanye's like, wait, Paris Fashion Week? This, this is where the new collections are debuting? I'm gonna go, you know? Like, I'm gonna use this door. And he invited all of us to go with him because he knew that that's what we were into. And he's mm. like, this is where the designer's at. These are where the ideas are coming from. You know, like, we would literally be at the Marie's lobby, come down and look at each other's outfits and be like, oh, you gotta step it up. Yeah. Like, you know, we need to go this way. We're going to Calm. So this particular show, Calm de Garçon, we get out. There's only two photographers. Not like, there was no scene, basically. Mm -hmm. One of which is Tommy Tan, and he takes the photo of Kanye, Taz Arnold, Fonzworth Bentley, mm -hmm. Ivan Jasper, Don Crawley, and myself. That photo then, like, began to to like rule the internet. You know, this is like before social media is like fully ramped what it is now. That was us sort of saying, hey, we want to participate in this arena. So you're not traditionally trained, but what I love is that you don't have to be because yeah, we, yeah. you've covered it in other ways. Yeah, yeah. Can you explain to everyone, you're an engineer. Yeah. You have an engineering degree. Yeah, basically started, you know, my dad, my parents are from Ghana and West Africa. They did the hardest part of that show or my journey, is, which is, putting me in a place where I could sort of flourish. They could raise a kid with opportunity. And so, uh, you know, I took advantage of that when I was a teenager. And then my dad said, like, hey, I always wanted a son as an engineer. And I'm the opposite of like a rebel type. So I was like, that's the least I can do for like giving, for you making that strive from a third world country. And to, Yeah, it's like, I, I, you're gonna get a son that's an engineer. Have you been able to use your engineering background in fashion and in your art? A hundred percent. Like, so I studied engineering, then got a master's degree in architecture. And I explained to people, it's, this, it's like how the world works in a way. It's like an analytical thinking, like how do you make a building stand up? But then there's the, the, the yin yang part of it. It was like, what does the building look like and what does it do? How does it perform? Why is it relevant? Or, so it's analytical plus like aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And I use that in fashion design or in my art practice. Are you a researcher? Yeah, because what we're living now has already sort of been lived before us. There's the metaphors are like numerous. So, so. you've got to translate it in another way. Exactly. But which you're doing. Yeah. Which you've done. <laughs> you know, try to. And now House of Vuitton. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what have you used from the House of Vuitton and from the past and their history? Yeah. If you had time to even go back into the archives. You know, I, I had done a number of like months of research just even like while I was preparing for the job. You know, right, I, I right. was working on it. And to me, what struck me is like Louis Vuitton himself was very much like how my practice and how I think. Mm -hmm. So. 1854, he developed the trunk. You know, trunks are usually like a chest at that time. So they all had a rounded top to like, so water would come off the top. Oh. So what he had done is he made it flat so you could stack them because you can't stack yeah. chests. You know, you make an innovation, then every other competitor is going to say, oh, I'm just going to do the same thing. Way. So there comes the print. It wasn't the, it was the damier, but then the mm -hmm. monogram. 
became a way to distinguish the ones he made. I see. So if you take fashion, transpose it to now, say off-white era, and it's like, there's so many clothing brands. I'm going to print on mine so people know that mine this are This is different. yours. So that was your my, trademark. Yeah, it was like, you know, the diagonal lines or the arrow signified. The cross. Yeah, but I was doing that to cut and sew garments in Italy and sourcing fabrics from Japan, you know, making it in an atelier. Even so, on your shoes with the yeah, orange tag. Yeah, exactly. Finding a way to yeah. sort of denote it from afar. And so being at Vuitton, I think it's super profound on a business and CEO and management level is like if you find a creative that's passionate, they will be they will carry the baton. I went to the archive and you have the original trunks. Let it, then you have Marc Jacobs' whole collection. Then you have Nicholas Gasquet's whole collection. Then you have Kim Jones and all the things in between. And they're allowing me to place my full collections in the same archives that go back to 1854. So that, to me, can't, you can't erase that. No. And so, you know, for them to sort of say, you know, appointing me seems like news, but that is like a longer, you That's know. That's legacy. Yeah, and I want us to be remembered. That's been my, it's been my goal. How is it following Kim's steps? Oh, it's great. I used to sleep on Kim's couch in the front room was house in Maida Vale. Like if you rewind the tape, it kind of makes sense because Kim Jones looked at Kanye and I and we're like, hey, these kids are eager. You know, this is when Kim was doing Umbro. You know, so he was mixing sportswear and luxury. He had amazing Vivian Westwood archives and was like not looking at Kanye and I like just like, uh, you know, a celebrity friend to hang out with. He mm -hmm. saw our passion for clothes. He would take us vintage shopping. He would share the energy. And, you know, we loved Jordans. And we never met a designer that sort of knew streetwear culture like that. And so, you know, we've, he helped us develop our skill set in design and we're still friends. So, you know, he was instrumental in sort of like making the transition for me happen. You had an emotional moment yeah. with Kanye. Yeah. And it was, I think, on top of the show being magnificent, uh -huh. that just <laughs> brought everybody's heart out. Everybody just wanted to cry. Yeah. Well, Kanye was the guy, when it was completely unpopular, that said, I am not to be typecast into a box. Like, he willed it for us. You know, like, I'd go back, he, f he was like, we're going to Fashion Week, this place that we can't get in. That dream is his just as much as it's mine. In my dream, it was him down the runway. The one thing that I, that has to be stressed about that show is that it actually wasn't me on the runway. You know, it was the community. That show was us, you know, and that link wouldn't have happened unless, you know, I acknowledged that Kanye stood from a mountaintop long ago and yelled saying, the future of fashion will be like this. So this is, I wanted the world to see that the guy who fought for this moment is a part of it and is uniquely linked to, you know, me doing it. Okay, so Cold War, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Michael Williams, every time I meet someone, they worked with Virgil, they were Virgil's <laughs> assistant. I'm like, wow. And what I love hearing is how you go as busy as you are to yeah. each and every one show to support them. Yeah, Kim. I learned that from you, by the way. You know? <laughs> like we do it, this, we both do it naturally. We have you know? to support. Like it's like. I feel, you know, you can't force me to do something. Yeah. I have to feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to feel for that person. But when I do wow. and I'm committed, yeah. I'm committed. So you're really open about the designers you admire. Oh yeah. Can you tell me? Because I've never asked you that question. No, to me, just for instance, like Ricardo Tisci, reprogrammed my idea of what luxury was because he was making things and still is that related to my lifestyle. It was the first time that I'd seen sort of, you know, high fashion sort of with the fit proportion attitude that was happening on the street. Yeah, good uh, Nicolas Gasquier, you know, his work from now all the way back to Balenciaga, Balenciaga you know, It's a Weird Trip was the first time that I had seen graphic design in a way that related to what was happening in the street, you know, and so Phoebe Philo to me is like, 
you know, a modern sort of genius for her way to translate luxury, empower women, or whatever her ethos is, comes through on the most simple garment in the environment. Mm -hmm. That's what that moment of my show was so emotional. I did not ever think that I could be a designer with a capital D because no one looked like me. Just plain and simple. I, I couldn't see, I was like, I'll never get the capitalization. I might be a designer, but I might do it and do another per career. Because I was like, I don't see people that look like me. I, I have to get struck by a certain type of lightning to get that sort of uh, epiphany to be someone to tap me with a wand and say, you're a designer, let alone like, you know, Head so house. that, yeah, all those things, you know, I could, I have a whole list of things. That's why I love culture and I love, you know, exploring. Well, none of it's changed you. You're exactly the same from when I met you. <laughs> um, what you, I mean, I don't say it's this end goal. There's no, this is a beginning goal. Yeah, me. you know, this 100%. Is the beginning goal. Yeah, what's in this? What's, I mean, next? I feel like, I honestly feel like I just graduated like school, a master's program. You know, now is the beginning. Now is the, the body of work starts. Yeah. I look at the show just the other day as my first show. You know, and I now have to sort of remove that block, that glass ceiling of like perception that I had for myself. Like you can't be that. You're now, in it. So it now, <laughs> and then we're the establishment. Like we, we can, no, I will no longer be referencing the old days and then the, the, the barrier to entry because We've, through our hard work over our whole careers, but in the, these conversations that me, you, and Edward have been having, Amen. we've we've sort of made a landscape that we need to sort of like forward, move forward. Let's make the world that we wanted to see, yeah. and no longer like that everyone like feels that. comfortable to exactly. be exactly. And I feel like we're all full of energy. Everyone has this new perspective. And we possess like an enormous strength. So, like, I'm legitimately like, who can we empower next? <laughs> you know? I'm just, I'm so happy to do this interview. No, um, it's great. Thank you so much, by the way. Great. No, thank you. Sweet. Oh my gosh, sitting down with Virgil, the businessman of the planet. <laughs>